<sighs> what am I going to say that's funny? I'm not feeling funny today. I don't, you don't need that, right? Can I just not be, I'm not witty, usually, and um, I'm not feeling particularly witty today. So I'm just going to go with, hi, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay, let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudsers? Welcome back to the channel. You are here for another round of 365 days of soap. And today we are doing one of my most favorite bars ever to make. And I'm not just saying that, even though I do say that for almost all of them. But this one I, I love. I love it. This one is Am I Bright? And it is one of two of my best sellers in my Hey Girl line on the website and in the shop. I've been doing it since the beginning of the soapy journey and I have not been allowed to discontinue it. Every time I try, I receive lots of emails and messages saying, where's Am I Bright? So we're not discontinuing it. This bar is absolutely delightful. It is a three color in the mold swirl. We you know, take a skewer to it. Sometimes we take a hanger to it. The pattern changes a lot from batch to batch, but the scent always stays the same. And it's coconut and it's citrus and it smells like nerds candy, which is amazing. It also has a jojoba bead exfoliant in it. So it has a little bit of a buffer going on with it. And yeah, it's absolutely delightful. It's one of my favorite pours ever and you get to watch me make it and we'll talk about the oils and the stuff that goes in it right now. Right now. Let's do it. The making of Am I Bright. Now, do you have anything in your life that you've done for a bajillion years and you find like such comfort in it and it makes you, you know, happy? This is that for me. The Am I Bright is one of the first bars that I put into the line. This was the second bar made in the women's line. And it's it's so beautiful and bright. It smells like Nerds Candy. And it is, you know, big bold colors within it. And such a, a lovely and fun bar to make because each time I make it, it changes a little bit. And that, that's the beauty of like an in the pot swirl or an in the mold swirl, depending on what I decide to do. And I, I love that. I love that it's been, you know, five years and I have never made the exact same Am I Bright ever. Now, what I am doing here is I'm dispersing the colorants into a little bit of the base oils just to ensure that everything is well mixed. Now, the reason for this is that we are working with ultramarines today instead of micas. And micas are really lightweight, so you can absolutely just mix those directly into your soap batter. But with ultramarines, it is a, a heavier weight uh, colorant, and so it takes a little bit more effort to make sure that they're really well mixed. We don't have any extra clumps or bumps in the finished soap product itself. So you really want to make sure that you well mix that before you incorporate that into your soap batter. Now, with the Kaolin Clay, I put that into the fragrance today. I have mixed that into the fragrance, and you know, I, I do it a little bit different for every batch, just kind of depending on my mood and my level of prep. Uh, I've mixed the Kaolin with water, I've mixed it with oils, I've mixed it within my fragrances itself. For this particular recipe, I am mixing it within the, uh, the fragrance, and cool. Now it's time for the turning of the oils and the lye water into soap. So we are going to start the uh, stick blending process. 
I want to get this particular soap recipe to about a, well, I mean, really, I, I go for emulsification with everything because, you know, it's, it's chemistry. Once you hit emulsification, it doesn't matter what you do with the soap batter from that point on, it's going to become soap. And so I want to make sure it gets to emulsification. And most of the time, because I am a sucker for swirls, I don't want to go any further than that. And with this particular recipe, I want to keep the batter really kind of nice and lightweight so we can do the really beautiful swirls within the mold itself. Now I'm going to pour out basically equal parts. So this is a three color swirl and I will have equal parts of the purple, the orange, and then the white for the rest of it. This is an exfoliant bar, so I will also be adding jojoba beads to the white portion to you know get the scrubby effect. Now, with this particular soap batter, it is beautiful at this point. It's nice and, and fluid, and it's going to give me plenty of time to do the awesome swirls, which is good. And for this particular pour, we are going to be taking the white, the purple, and the orange, and laying them down on top of each other, sort of like an S-curve throughout the, the mold. And usually I take a hanger, to this and do a couple swirls on the inside and then you know do it pretty top on it and it, it's awesome and I think I'm gonna go ahead and actually do it right for once today so you guys are going to see a proper pour in action as opposed to me either forgetting that I needed a hanger and using a skewer or you know me deciding that I'm just not gonna do it Now the final step before we pour is going to be to split the scent into the three containers and make sure that it's well mixed in before we, we do the pour. I like to wait until the very end to mix my, you know, my scent blend into the soap batter because essential oils and whatnot can do really different things to the soap batter itself and the biggest thing that it can do in the immediate is it can accelerate trace so we can make the soap really thick really quickly. And if that happens, if I, for example, mix the essential oils in with the rest of my base oils, my moisturizing oils, before I pour, I can end up with a really thick batter of soap with not enough time to really make sure my colors are dialed in and they're exactly how I want them before I pour. And then I'm rushed and the bar doesn't do what I want it to do. And, you know, then it's it's still a successful soaping thing because, you know, we've, we've made soap, but it doesn't exactly have the artistry that, that I had in mind. So for that reason, always always make sure that you mix your your scent in absolutely last now everything is ready to go and we are going to be doing the pour now and I like to lay about a third of the the batter of the white batter down into the mold before I do anything with the colored batter just to give it you know a, a nice base coat of something before I add you know the accents and with the accents I am going to be sort of putting them into the mold with an S-curve, kind of raising and lowering my container as I pour to make sure that gravity is, is doing its thing and the colored portion is going all the way to the bottom of the mold. And I will do the exact same thing with the second color, in this case the purple. And then at this point I'm just going to alternate between the three colors just sort of over and over again. Now, doing this continues to move, you can see inside the mold, it continues to move the soap batter around in really interesting ways, which means that every single bar is going to be, is going to be different. And that's cool. And you could theoretically just do this, an in the pot or an in the mold swirl, rather, and you know, let it cure up, cut it out, and every single bar is going to be unique and interesting and awesome. But I really like to create a more, I don't know, precise um, swirl, I guess. And I, I don't know, there, there, there's nothing really precise about what it is that I'm doing, but the, adding the hanger portion at the end really allows me to pull those colors into each other just a little bit more and create something that's that looks a little bit different than just like a regular, like say, drop swirl or something like that. Not that this is necessarily a drop swirl, the, the batter is far too thin to actually accomplish a drop swirl, but this would be very similar to the pattern that you would do, the process that you would do if you were doing a drop swirl soap. 
Ultimately, I really love the way that this particular soap lays down. I, I love working with the really, really fluid batters. That is one of my most favorite things in the world, is working with a really thin batter like this. And that's that's the reason why, you know, the 50-50 the blend of the liquid to the solid oils, or even a 60-40 a for liquid to, to solid, seem to be my go-to. Now, I'm taking the hanger to this. At this step, I'm taking the hanger all the way down to the bottom, and then I'm going to move it to the middle and straight up, and then I'm going to take it back to the left, and I'm going to put it about a third of the way down and take it all the way over to the opposite side and pull it up. And then in that sort of you know, half between the middle and the, and the end there, pull it in again and over to the left, and then that's it. And you get to see just what that looks like when we cut into the bar after it has um, you know, fully, fully hardened. Now, at this point, I used to do really, really precise lines with my, my toppers, like really precise, and I would literally be sweating at this point, just super nervous that I was gonna, I was gonna mess up a line and it wasn't going to be really, really straight and therefore my pattern on top was going to be awful and I was going to cry because I put so much, whatever. And that's not, it's not the case. It's like, look at this batter. It's so thin. It's so easy to pour and manipulate. Therefore, when I do my topper, it's all going to sort of pull into each other like perfectly. And it's going to look just amazing when it's all said and done. So yeah, don't, don't overly stress about making these really perfectly straight, awesome lines that you see in probably other people's videos. Honestly, I don't, I'm not that kind of soper. I, you know, okay, you know, it, it all works out. Now I'm going to take the skewer and I'm going to go just one direction with the skewer and pull it into, I believe this is called something like a peacock swirl and I believe people actually sell little tools that will take it all the way down the mold without you having to, you know, do four or five passes on your own. But I just, you know, do this and yeah, this is, this is done. We are going to cover this up put it in the oven, we're gonna see pop it, we're gonna force it through gel, and we will cut it tomorrow and see what kind of beautiful patterns inside. Okay, so we're back on day two. Um, it has cured overnight, and it did go through gel, and you can see right there, there are little teeny tiny cracks on the top of the bar, which suggests that it actually got over Heated. So you do have to be careful with that when you are seat popping things, when you are trying to get your soaps through gel. Because if it does get too much heat inside, you're, you're going to get that cracking on top. Which is, you know, not the best thing, but you can also make that work to your advantage in other types of soap. Not this one specifically. Now look at the, yeah, oh, the pattern on these guys, it's just, it's so beautiful. Now. This is what I was talking about before, the uh, taking the hanger to a sort of chaotic pour like this is just so beautiful. It yields so many different bars and it's all very interesting. And this is one of my most favorite bars to do soap Rorschach with because everyone sort of sees a different pattern in, in a bar of soap and it's a lot of fun to interact with the sudsers in that way. And you know, there, there you have it, there's the Am I Bright. The, she's beautiful, she's lovely, thanks for sticking around for another day of 365 days of soap and you know that's that's it for this one so i recently got notified that uh soap asmr is a thing and i don't exactly know what asmr is but if it means finding something really satisfying about pouring a batch of soap well then this is soap asmr because it's delightful. I loved everything about that pour. I loved everything about the finished product. This is a bar that I can do in my sleep because I do it so often. And you know, I'm glad that you were along to watch me do it this time. And yeah, I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned some interesting stuff about how to do it in the in the mold swirl as opposed to an in the pot swirl. And yeah, that's that's kind of it for us today. So 
thank you so much for sticking around for another day and I really appreciate you and you know I would appreciate it also if you haven't subscribed yet do the thing that'd be cool we're still running a contest right now for a big old box of soapy love and you're gonna want that I, I promise you're gonna want that because when I do giveaways I do big giveaways anyway Thanks again for being here today, guys. I really appreciate it. If you are interested in the Am I Bright, you can find it on the website at soapandclay.com. If you are interested in finding me on social media, you can do that too at Soap and Clay. Uh, I don't even use soap for Facebook. And yeah, thanks so much for sticking around. I've thanked you so many times today, but I really do mean it. I appreciate you, and I'm glad that you're along for this soapy ride, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.